Good evening, everyone. Um, this meeting of the Galt Joint Union Elementary School District Board of Education is hereby called to order. Um, will everybody please stand and join us in the flag salute? Salute pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, there was no action taken in closed session. So we will now move on to item D, which is board meeting protocol. Superintendent Yell. Thank you, Mr. Silva. Our session introduction for tonight, our meeting is being recorded. The meeting is open to the public and the meeting is also broadcast live through Zoom teleconference. For public comment, public comments are three minutes per agenda item. The board shall limit the total time for public comment for each agenda item up to 20 minutes. And with board consent, the board president may increase or decrease the time allowed for public comment. To make public comment via Zoom teleconference, notify the board meeting assistant through the chat box feature in Zoom or by using the raised hand feature in Zoom during the agenda item to be addressed. You will be identified by your display name in Zoom when called upon to speak. To make public comment in person, please complete a public comment form indicating the item you would like to address. And that would go to our board meeting assistant, Ms. Bach. Email public comments can be emailed to the superintendent uh, 24 hours before the board meeting and will be posted to the district's website with the agenda. Um, we have not received email public comment for our meeting tonight and comment is limited to 450 words. Board vote and connectivity. Each motion will be followed by a roll call vote for action items. Should a board member attend the meeting remotely and lose connectivity by teleconference or phone, the meeting will be delayed by five minutes. Um, we do not have um, board members that are with us tonight via teleconference and our regular board meeting shall be adjourned by 1030. All right, thank you very much. We will now move on to item E, which is reports. And then uh, superintendent, you have the first three. Thank you. I wanted to give the board, I wanted to start with um, an update from the Office of Public School Construction, the application process update. Um, as you probably remember the last few years, I'd say actually probably the last three years, we've submitted quite a few applications under Prop 51. Um, we currently have five, we've submitted five applications, four of what we would consider active. We use Mimi Deans Williams as a consultant to help us with these applications. And it's, it's time, timing right now because we're hoping the governor, the, the proposal with the budget is that the governor would possibly give facilities, school facilities, 3.9 billion from the general fund for school construction school facility construction projects. And so we're hoping that if this goes, this passes and that there's almost $4 billion in the budget for facilities, that means they would start funding some of these applications. And so we are very hopeful. We have some that are getting very close. Um, the first one there is the Marengo Ranch. That was the facility hardship that we have re already received. And so that is one application that is done. We've submitted um, our audit for that as well. We use those funds to upgrade Greer last year. One application that is very hopeful, it is what's, it's considered unfunded approval, meaning it's approved. We will receive the funding for almost $4 million. It's just whenever the state releases the funds. So they either have to sell a bond or they have to give a generous, generous contribution like this to, to the budget for facilities. And that would be for Valley Oaks. Um, so we're hoping that the timeline, we're hoping by the end of December, the end of this year, we will know for sure a timeline of when we would receive those funds. And so we're hoping that this time next year, we might be removing some portables and replacing them with a permanent classroom building over at Valley is how we would like to use those funds. And then we also have an application. Our next application is for the River Oaks. It's on what's considered your workload list. It's just right underneath your unfunded approval. It's uh, 
not approved yet, but it's getting to that list. And then we have two more applications, both for another one for Greer and for River Oaks, a um, little over, well, about $3.5 million. They are what's considered the acknowledged list. So you can see they have a couple steps to go before they're on the unfunded list, but I thought it was timing to, to give you an update on where we're at with these applications. And hopefully we'll just keep moving up the list and the governor does end up giving some, a decent amount of money to school facility projects. Any questions on that? No, go ahead. Okay. All right, facilities update kind of in the same area here. Um, we've got a lot going on this summer. Um, some of this work will be done from outside contractors and vendors. Um, some of this will be done by our own maintenance and grounds department. Just wanted to highlight a few things that we are looking at. Um, we currently are installing classroom sinks and cabinets at Greer Elementary that's under construction. Exterior painting at Fairsight will start July 1st. Um, we're hoping to install the tr um, shade structure at McCaffrey, the track. Everything's been ordered. We're just hoping materials will come in this summer. We're replacing kitchen flooring at McCaffrey. We're replacing multi-purpose flooring at Marengo Ranch. Um, we're looking at, we're in the process of getting quotes to up, update security gates at all of our school sites and also put secure, um, fencing around Kinder at Lake Canyon. Um, carpet across the district, every school site's getting at least a few classrooms recarpeted, multiple HVAC system upgrades. Um, we're hoping to replace and repair downspouts at McCaffrey Middle School this year. We noticed this last winter, a lot of the downspouts are leaking. And so we're hoping to get that done. Um, Reslurry parking lots at uh, River Oaks. Um, River Oaks Elementary is also going to get a new intercom clock and bell system. Um, Mendo is leading that and various sprinkler irrigation, um, resod resodding lawns and things like that. We're hoping to, we have a plan to really give Fairsight a facelift with the lawn in the front. So hoping for that. Some larger facility projects, and um, we'll talk a little bit more about a potential for a maintenance shop um, later in the agenda. Um, and I mentioned we're hoping this time next year we're under construction at Valley Oaks with a new classroom building. And then there's also two portable classrooms at Greer that we need to remove. So those are some, some future projects pending some of that state facility money coming in. I don't know if there's anything else that the board would like to see with facility upgrades in the near future, anything that you would like us to look at as, as we're hoping more money comes in. Just, just a quick question <clears throat> for, the, for the, the sod, is that um, with the drought restrictions, how does that affect it? Well, we actually just talked to our groundskeepers, met with our the Parks and Recs or the um, Public Works Department, and they are, I believe we get to water two or three days a week. We have days that we, we can water. They said they will also um, be flexible with us when, if we are in a situation to where we are resodding, um, they know we might need a little more water in the beginning. Um, they don't want our grass or our lawns to die. Um, they understand that we have a, you know, commitment to the community too to keep our schools up, and so they are being flexible with us as long as um, they're not driving around and seeing that we're over watering out into the sidewalks. We have leaks that we're not repairing. Um, they they will work with us, but we can't water every day. We we do have to follow. I believe it's three days a week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I do have a question uh, as far as a future facility project, at least I think it might fall under facilities. Um, and I'd like to know what the rest of the board thinks about this. Um, but just looking at the, the marquees, the signs in front of our schools, 
they're, they're very dated, they're very problematic in terms of, of how it is, you know, how hard it is to update them. Um, and I'd like to, uh, to see what the, what the rest of the board thinks about potentially uh, at some point installing electronic signs, because I think there's a lot of potential use in terms of messaging. Um, some sites probably more than others. And in, in terms of like, you know, like if you look at McCaffrey, the amount of traffic that you get there, I think it's an opportunity for us to continue to message. Um, another one that I think would be really important, if you think about um, Valley Oaks, if you have an electronic sign, then you have the ability to, to, to message in English and Spanish. And I think there's a, you know, that's a, a, a real, I think it's necessary. So I think that would be something that I think would be important for us to consider. So I just, I just wanted to put that down as a, as a potential facility project and see what the rest of the board thinks about it is, you know, I mean, obviously it's not a high priority, but I'm just curious what you guys think about it. No, I mean, I drive past Galt High School and I don't even have students at Galt High School and I see myself reading, you know, the sign as you go by. It's a great way to so see athlete of the week and, you know, they post a lot of stuff up there. Um, of course, it'd be, you know, cost and, but definitely something to look into. I think it, like you said, McCaffrey gets so much traffic because if you put stuff there, even every elementary school goes to McCaffrey. You know what I mean? Plus it's the traffic. They do soccer practices there. You get a lot of traffic there and then Valley Oaks too as well. Right. So just sharing information about, you know, holidays and things like that. I think it would be really important for the, for the district. So something I'd just like to see us consider too. Yeah. We can start getting some estimates to see what something like that would cost. Okay. Anything else? Any other great suggestions? <laughs> Okay, then we'll go ahead and move on to school safety. Okay, so school safety, just wanted to highlight some of the things that we have in place to make sure that we're keeping students and staff um, safe. Um, we do, all the classroom doors are locked during the day. We have security fencing and gates at all of our school sites. We have surveillance cameras and we have increased our surveillance cameras um, over the last couple of years. And we do collaborate regularly with Galt Police Department um, this year. Um, and prior to COVID, we did it every year, but we brought it back this year. Um, our administrative team met with Galt Police Department in the fall and they shared um, best practices. They look at our procedures and they also um, visit, they participate in a lockdown drill at all of our school sites. And then they give our administrative team feedback on how the drills um, went. We're also, um, actively communicating with city manager Lorenzo Hines and our police chief. Um, we had one meeting probably about a month ago just to start some conversations about safety. And we have another meeting tentatively scheduled for July 12th. Um, the high school is involved with that as well. Um, at this meeting, we're hoping to have um, both superintendents from the district, um, SROs, our police chief, our city manager, um, if we would open it up to board members, if they would want to attend as well, we could have two that would attend. Um, we had Sean Farmer that attended the, um, Mayor Sean Farmer that attended the meeting we had about a month ago. Tracy Skinner attended as well, and a board member from the high school. Um, so we're just, we're continuing to keep that collaboration open and and just, you know, if there's best practices or new, new procedures out there that we need to implement based on things that have happened over the last couple of months. We want to be proactive and do that. Um, part of the planning will be also when we meet in July to determine what we need to do when our administrators are coming back in August and our staff come back in August as well. So part of the end service day is when teachers come back. We always, our, our admin always go over safety procedures as well. So we'll see if there's anything different or new that we need to do, um, but just wanted you to know the kind of communication we're having with the city, the police department, the high school district as well. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I appreciate setting up this meeting. I think it is really important for us at this point to have that discussion about what the school resource officer is and isn't. I think especially for us to communicate that to the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. um, so that there's no misconceptions about what they do. Um, 
or don't do. So I think that's that's really important that, that we clarify that. Mm -hmm. So I think it's great that you're setting up that discussion. Um, and yeah, please keep us informed of when the meeting is scheduled. We'll see. I am sure we'd probably all love to be there. It just depends on when it is. So keep us informed of that. But I think it's now is a great time to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, we don't want to make assumptions and then find out that they were wrong assumptions. Mm -hmm. later on. So I think that's very important that we are mm -hmm. continuing to have that discussion. Yeah, I mean, I'm super um, appreciative that we have it on the calendar now. Mm -hmm. um, I think that collaboration is important especially because Galt does have the high school district and the mm -hmm. elementary district. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, it's to have all of us in the room at the same time with the police department and city manager, mm -hmm. you're just going to, I just think it's going to be positive. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I know I can make that day. It's it tentatively, we're just waiting to hear back to make sure the date works for the high school police department and city have responded. I believe it's July 12th. Uh, in the morning, Kawhi, did we, we just confirmed with most everyone today. It is during the, I know it's during the day, so I know that's harder to get off work, but if you know ahead of time. I'll put it down. And I'll okay. We'll let everybody know. Love it. And unless we hear back this week that that date doesn't work for the high school district, but other than that, I, I, I think we're, we're pretty good on that date. Okay. Thank you. And I think that anyway, wraps up my reports. Yeah. One, uh, or well, LCAP goal one, item one, spring district assessment data. Yes, thank you. I think um, Kawhi will project the data on the screen for us. The district reading assessment is a foundational reading skills test that is administered at the end of each trimester. You have heard us report on the results in the past. The data that you will see and that you have included in your packet represent the percent of students who met all of the end of the year benchmarks for their grade level. The LCAP goal at this time shows that um, we would like to increase the percent of children that are meeting the end of the year benchmarks from year to year by 10%. What you have in front of you, again, is the data for the DRA. I would like us to look at the district, which is the, the first data set. We have the DRA data by school. We also have it by grade level right now. I would like us to focus on the DRA by school and we'll look at district. So if you look at the district, uh, in the fall of 2021, we had 44% of the students in grades TK3 meeting the end of, uh, or meeting the end of the trimester benchmarks. Winter 2022, we had 55%. And then in the spring of 2022, we had 54. If you look at growth, from beginning of the year to the end of the school year, we show a gain of 10%. But keep in mind that for the LCAP, we are wanting to look at winter to winter gains of 10% more each year. So as a district, this year in the winter, 55% of the students met end of the year benchmarks. We would like, I'm sorry, uh, end of the second trimester benchmarks. So this is our new target. Winter of 2023, we would like to see 65% of the children meeting the end of the second trimester benchmarks. You can see that same information for each school. If we look at the bottom set of data, that same, um, the same results are represented by grade level. Again, if you look at the district, you see the same um, information there. The district in this case, when you disaggregate it by grade level, it kind of depends on, on how many children took the test, what test, the uh, new targets are slightly different depending on how you disaggregate the data. 
In general, this is what we're gonna look at, what you see on the top. We want to see that 55 go to 65. If you turn the page, the next data, uh, data sets that you have represent uh, preschool. And last month, Cole G shared with us all the adjustments, all the work that they have done to align the preschool benchmarks to the kindergarten readiness benchmarks. So for the preschool, here you have all students and you have a student group of the dual language learners. For all students, 55% of the students met the end of the, or the, well, in this case, yes, the end of the year benchmarks, that was spring 2022. We also want to grow again by 10%. And this year, or I'm sorry, spring of 2023, we would like to see 65% of them meeting those targets. If you take a look at the results for the dual language learners, we didn't really see a change. We didn't see a decrease, but we also didn't see gains. The last data set that we want to share with you is uh, MAP. MAP, as you already know, we take that three times a year for students in first and second. The third graders don't take MAP in the spring because they take SBAC. So we will be sharing SBAC uh, scores and results once we get those. I'm hoping to bring that information to you in September. But for now, if we look at uh, MAP scores for first and second grade in the area of reading and math, Again, you can see how the children did in fall of 2021, winter of 2022, this last spring, the growth made and the new target. Any questions, any comments? Okay. Looks good to me. No, thank you for clarifying that. If we move on to the next item, we have the uh, California School Dashboard Local Indicator Information. We have brought this to you in the past. You, um, I'm sure, have seen this information in the past. So at this point, what we would like to do is share some highlights that are included in the report. At this time, I would like you to look at I would like us to look at priority two, page six. If you turn to page six, under academic standards for world language, we rated ourselves a, um, on a scale of one to five, a three for initial implementation. This is the first time that middle school students will have access to a world language. We're offering Spanish. Lois has really, um, focused on ensuring that we provide additional access to children, that we bring more to the students, especially at the middle school level. So she made it possible, and next year will be the first time that we are offering Spanish at McCaffrey. We are coordinating the, um, the class objectives as well as the assessments with the high school, so that what we are doing at McCaffrey builds upon what the high school has prepared for them, again, in the area of world language, Spanish. I would also like us to look at priority seven, page 13. For this summary at the top, under number four, I do wanna highlight that for McCaffrey, for uh, students in grades seven and eight, we continue to have limited access to career and technical education, mostly because of the restrictions that come along with credentials. So it's, it's a bit hard to offer more. We want to, we're ready, but the limitations that we have with uh, credentials don't really allow us to provide um, a solid CTE program to students at this time. Do know that we are exploring different options. Um, we will look at, at collaborating with the high school to see if somehow we can use the same resources to provide services to students in our district while they're providing services to students in their district. But I, I did wanna highlight that we continue to have limited access in that area. Donna is going to highlight a few items for some of the local indicators. I wanted to look at um, the priority three on page seven, the parent and family engagement, and that um, primarily we use our Cal School survey and then um, 
The first one is building relationships with the school and families. The second is building partnerships. And the third one is seeking input for decision making. And just a, a few highlights in the building relationships. I, I just really need to call out our our outreach um, teams at our school, our school social workers and our counselors and um, our office personnel or that, you know, in all of our school offices, it's bilingual and um, just the support personnel to help build those relationships. Um, partnerships for, for student outcomes. I, um, I just also need to, to point out our bilingual um, community outreach assistants who are out there at every school site working to build partnerships and then seeking input. Um, I think that our district English learner advisory committee, I am still just, just overwhelmed that, you know, at every single meeting online, we get 40 to even sometimes 50 families attending. And that is for the, you know, for the input on the decision making. The one um, part I wanted to bring out, still a little bit to improve, and we use the Cal School Survey for a lot of the some of this indicators, is 95% uh, of our parents, there are 402 parents and our families answered the responded on the Cal School Survey, but 95% said that um, they had never served on a school committee. Perhaps we don't have a lot of different, you know, school level committees, but I thought that still would be an area to look at for an improvement to get more of our families participating. And the last um, priority area would be school climate and the area of school climate really looks at the California Healthy Kids Survey. We're required by um, ed code to survey our fifth and seventh grade students every three years. But for the last three years, we've been um, surveying all of our fifth, sixth, seventh and eighth grade students. And so I think that every year, and then our administrators, of course, and I think uh, Lois had already reported on the Cal Schools information and administrators worked with someone from Cal Schools is really disaggregating the importance of the school level data. And um, they share that with their staff. So that was um, the other area to highlight. Any questions on those priority areas? So all the information you have in front of you will be included in the California dashboard when, it's re when it uh, will be released in the fall. We don't have a, a date at this point. So as a summary, I would like to highlight that priority one, we have a ranking of MET. And that was basic conditions. Priority two, implementation of state academic standards. We have a ranking of MET. Priority three, family engagement. Ranking of MET. Priority six, school climate. Ranking of MET. Priority seven, access to a broad course of study. Ranking of MET. So at this time, we are um, you know, just sharing what we have. And again, once this is made public, on the California dashboard. We'll probably revisit this and we'll have further discussion if needed. Any questions? Any comments? Yeah, let us know when you figure out how to get that other 95% to start volunteering for uh, committees. That would be awesome. We will bring it back to you, yes. A little overwhelming, but yeah. thank you. Okay. Any other comments, questions? I just wanted to share, um, you know, just to highlight the the growth that students have made on district reading assessments and MAP for TK through third grade. It's been a tough year and to see some growth in the double digits in those areas. I mean, all the grade levels, all the school sites were positive in green for growth in all the areas. And that's really what we're we're trying to do. So congratulations to the staff, our, our teachers. Um, hopefully most of them are relaxing summer and not on board meeting right now, but you never know if you are there. Congratulations to that hard, hard work and growth and our administrators as well. All right. Thank you very much. And that's it for reports. So we will go ahead and move on to item F, routine matters, new business. And first item is uh, item 212.318, and that is the consent calendar. 
Any items of significance you want to bring to our attention on the consent calendar? We do. We have um, a few items to note. I first wanted to note a retirement. Um, Deborah Castellan retired after 46 years in our district as a bilingual instructional assistant. Over those years, she served at Fairside and Valley Oaks, finished, finished her career at Valley, had a nice little celebration for her um, that last week of school. Um, just thank you for the amazing, that has to be a record, 46 years. And, and the Galt Herald did a nice little write-up. David Nelson, principal, provided some information and some highlights about Deborah's career, and they put that in the paper for her. So congratulations, um, Deborah. That's awesome. Did she really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's 46 years. How, wait, so, so how long has Valley Oaks been around since the mid 60s or something? Because it's yeah. close to 60 years old, right? Yeah. So, yeah, so there was, yeah, the, the paint was still relatively new when she started. Okay. <laughs> No, that is awesome. You know, as, as always, I think that says a lot about this district, right? That this is a place where, where, where people stick around for, for a reason. You know, people don't stick around because they're stuck here. It's because they want to be here. Um, and, and, and we see this all the time. So that's amazing. And, and yeah, thank you very much, Deborah. Um, any other notes? We do. Case? We have uh, quite a few donations. Lake Canyon PG&E Giving Fund donated 300 for school site use. UC Davis donated 1,000 for school site use. Marengo Ranch Box Tops for Education made a monetary donation for school use. Maria Guadalupe Carranza made a monetary donation towards Site Words Goal. And PG&E Giving Fund donated 240 for site use. McCaffrey, the PG&E Giving Fund, donated 609 for site use and Valley Oaks. Uh, Teresa Michael donated $200 for school site use. And then I do need to highlight one other um, change. This is item G. This is disposal of records. We had a couple items here. The quantity of boxes changed. So I would just like to report that for the first item, we had three boxes that has increased to 21 boxes for disposal, disposable of uh, accounts payable. Okay. And then about halfway down, we had one box for business deposits. That's now two boxes. And right under that, we had two. It's now three boxes for business accrual deposits. Does this stuff all get shredded internally or do you like contract it out to one of those big trucks that comes around? We have the big trucks. We have the, the huge like dumpsters in the warehouse um, that we use. But I believe when we're, when we're disposing this much, they come pick up as well. Okay. So we do uh, use a, a company. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or concerns about the consent calendar? All right. Bearing in mind, there's only three of us here. Do I have a motion to approve item 212.318, the consent calendar? I'll make that motion to approve 212.318. Thank you, Tracy. Do I have a second? Thank you, Casey. Thank you. I have a motion from Tracy Skinner to approve item number 212.318 with the edits to the disposal of records noted by Lois Yant, seconded by Casey Raboy. Tom Silva? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3 0. Okay, and now we'll move on to item 212.320. 
And that is board consideration of approval of the 2022-23 single plan for student achievement, the SIPSAs for Lake Canyon Elementary, Orango Ranch Elementary, River Oaks Elementary, Valley Oaks Elementary, Vernon E. Greer Elementary, and Robert L. McCaffrey Middle School. Okay, thank you. The single plans for student achievement, they reflect the site-based implementation of our local control and accountability or LCAP for our district. And our SIPSs are now on the same planning cycle as our district LCAP. And, and tonight we have our principals here and they're going to highlight just briefly two to three minutes of highlighter success for um, in their SIPSs. They um, just as a just as another quick reminder is the SIPSs are developed and are, need to be approved by their school site councils annually, and they are um, living documents, which means that in the fall, the school site council when they meet, they will be looking at expenditures. They will be approving additional expenditures, and the SIPS is updated with um, current assessment information. So this is like a snapshot moving forward into 2022-23. Um, and maybe we'll start down there with Marengo Ranch, Jennifer Porter, and then we'll just kind of go down the row. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Donna, for calling on me first. <laughs> um, I will highlight an area under goal number two, which is that whole learner development through social emotional learning. Um, it was critical for us to get the kids back in school at the beginning of the year, not only physically, but emotionally. And um, that was not easy to do at the beginning of the year when we had restrictions in place with COVID still. Uh, kids were wearing masks in the classrooms, they were socially distanced, and we wanted to do some things that would make the kids feel like it was a normal school year. So we did things like um, we had our Friday sing outside, which we've never done before. Um, we tried it on both sides of our VFLC, but it was actually wonderful. We had big screen Promethean board out there and the kids were thrilled to finally be back doing that. Um, we had our 25th anniversary of Marengo Ranch this year. So we did a spirit wear contest and we had the kids submit entries for designs for the spirit wear shirts and sweatshirts. And um, we liked their design so much that we ended up picking two different spirit wear shirts. We had a front and back on each one and we had children that received free spirit wear and some prizes for submitting the winning entries for that. Um, we had 96% uh, attendance this year, which is highlighted in the SIPSA, and that was a huge effort to get them to school and keep them there. And I really want to commend um, Diane Smith, our attendance secretary, for all of the hard work that she does calling families, um, along with Aurelia Magania, who works with her as our bilingual office assistant. They uh, worked tirelessly to communicate with parents throughout the year to just get them engaged, get the kids in school, find out what was going on at home, you know, and see how we could help and support them. So, um, it was really nice to have at least that minimum 96% um, for our attendance this year. And um, finally, we, we wanted to re-engage our parents too. So, and we would like to have them volunteer for our school site council and things like that. We do ask. Um, we had a huge picnic on the grounds turnout this year, and at least 95% of our parents came for picnic on the grounds and our open house that followed that. So those were some highlights for me. Thank you, Stephanie Simonich, Greer Elementary. Okay, thanks. I, I'd like to say that we really enjoyed our picnic on the ground and open house as well. We'll continue to do that um, in the future. I think um, first, before I highlight anything, I wanna thank um, our new office staff. We have um, wonderful ladies that all had new positions this year. And boy, talk about um, just jumping in and um, taking the reins. They did a tremendous job and really um, 
couldn't do the work we do without them. And um, so appreciative of the relationships they've built with students and um, our families. And then this year, as you know, we had uh, five new primary teachers at Greer and two new intermediate teachers at Greer. Um, and I just am so proud. Most six of them was their initially first year, um, full year in classroom instruction. And um, they, they made it and they did a wonderful job and so proud of um, the hard work and time that um, you know, they spent with students and families and building connections and relationships and um, looking forward to, to their spending, uh, looking forward to spending their second year with them next year. Um, we, I think that the, the most important work that, um, that we did this year for our staff and for our learners and for our families was uh, the continued work with our social worker, Sophie Lohr, and our, um, our partnership with SCOE. We had actually two separate partnerships this year, both uh, centered around mental health and wellness. Um, and um, we, we just really, really spent time sharing uh, strategies and uh, for, for fostering resilient youth in our classrooms and our teachers, you know, everyone had a calming corner this year, which students, you know, took advantage of if they needed to. And um, we had one in the office and I'm so proud of um, the opportunity that Greer had to receive um, the first um, mental health clinician in our district. And Leanne is an amazing team member for Sophie. They work really well together and um, have the best best interest of each child and family um, at, at the forefront of every decision that they make. And, um, you know, we talk about children feeling safe and, and being well before they can even be even really learn. And that's really um, what's most important in, in our SIPSA, I think at Greer. Um, just like if they're all out there listening to the board meeting tonight, I really, I really love them all and appreciate all the time they spend with me, um, you know, building a, a really healthy, healthy community at our school. Thank you, Donna Gill, River Oaks Elementary. Okay, um, I'm going to agree with these ladies about the importance of our social workers and counselors on campus. Um, it was really a challenge at the beginning of the school year, bringing students back. It was, um, it was very worrisome for parents because things were very different. They weren't allowed to be on campus for safety reasons. Um, and it's really hard when you leave your babies um, and they walk through those gates by themselves on the very first day of school. But with the support of every staff member, students were welcomed and they, um, built confidence. And through that confidence, we have seen a, a really a big improvement in some of our academic outcomes. Um, in our SIPSA on page 45, if you look at our map data, when we came back last spring and students took, took map for math, and this is first grade through sixth grade, 31% of our students met or exceeded the 60th percentile, which is our, our goal for every student. When we took it again um, this winter, 38% of our students. So we saw a 7% increase in the number of students that met that requirement and or met that, that target. Um, and that has a lot to do with the fact that they're starting to feel safe. They were getting back into the routine of school. Um, parents were coming alongside feeling comfortable with their children being back at school and in that environment. Um, and then for reading, it, last spring, we were at 40% of our students reached that 60 percentile, 60th percentile goal. And um, it, we, we hit 51% of our students met that goal this spring. So we're really proud of the growth that we're seeing. And we know that that growth wouldn't happen without the support of every staff member coming alongside every student 
and each other as adults and adult learners to just take care of each other and support each other um, emotionally. And um, so it's just, it's exciting to see not only students feeling better about school and seeing um, as restrictions were lifted, seeing things turn return to more normalcy, some normalcy, um, but we're seeing it in the data too. So there's, there's proof in that pudding that we know that they have to be emotionally ready in order to learn and be successful. And we're seeing a growth in success. It's not where we want it to be, but we're celebrating that growth. And, and I'm sure in the future, we'll continue to see that. So thank you for the support that you've given me and River Oaks and the district in terms of having these, these um, our, our social and emotional supports in place because we certainly couldn't do it just ourselves. We need those experts. So thank you very much. Thank you, Principal Judy Hayes, Lake Canyon. Yes, and um, for Lake Canyon, I would just agree with my colleagues that um, this was a big year to just reboot all of our systems. And we couldn't have done the work we did this year without the amazing staff and support, support from our parent community and community partners. And it really took all of us um, to pull this off and make Lake Canyon and I know all of our schools in the district a, a safe and welcoming place for our students. Um, some excerpts from the Lake Canyon single plan that I wanted to highlight was just um, a little bit from our, our surveys. Um, I was happy to see that 91% um, of our sixth graders um, cited that they know the adults in the school system have high expectations for them. Also um, glimpses from the survey from the parents, 88% um, think that Lake Canyon promotes academic success for all students. We had 96% know that they have adults on campus who really care about our students. And 92% say that it's a supportive and inviting place for students to learn. Um, in terms of academic support, something I wanted to highlight is the work of our multi, multiple tiered um, systems of supports, the MTSS system. And just that when we discover through ongoing data analysis and the fact that each and every child is known and their personalized pathway is revisited time and again as new assessments and data come in, that any students that we believe as a team need added supports or interventions or social emotional supports, typically um, the team of teachers will refer them to our MTSS team, where we have a group of our social workers, administrators, specialists, and teachers come together and brainstorm and, and put additional accommodations and um, supports in place for those students to help them be successful. And that's a strong system on our campus. And I'm proud to highlight and thankful to the members of, of that team. And then just like everyone else, um, just so thankful for the social emotional supports um, that are spearheaded by our social workers in our district. And um, I appreciate the fact that we've had the provision of a full-time social worker. Um, it really makes a huge difference for us. So thank you for your support. Wonderful. Principal Ron Raymer, McCaffrey Middle School. Hello. So um, Miss. Uh, misperception, I guess, that middle schoolers are, you know, these wild kids and the classes are wild. It's not a reality, at least at McCaffrey. But at the beginning of the school year, it was a little bit off the hook, <laughs> to say the least. The kids came back and they did not know how to behave. And we've talked about it before, just in general, not every student, of course. But if you have 25 kids on a campus misbehaving, it's a pretty rough day. So we had a pretty rough um, first half of the year. And um, I wanna say the, the last third of the year was incredible. The kids finally got it back and they finally figured out how to be good students again, good people again. And it's because of our staff. Um, it's because of the wellness center and the um, alternative center. And that would be goal two, um, activity one, where we focus on that. But the 
the wellness center um, saw constant students um, using it after about the first month of school and talking about it and sharing it, it the word kind of got out there I wouldn't I would say the kids were very good about how they used it they some did try to abuse it you know get out of class to go to the wellness center and but I, I say all in all the kids did a really nice job with it and our counselors were great at um, maintaining the environment and meeting with the students um, the alternative center saw i wish i had the exact number for you i would say between two and three hundred students and that did a lot of good things for kids because because it gave um a credential teacher an opportunity that would be leanne salome an opportunity to sit with those students and talk to them right as something happened and and then process it with them um, if they did get a suspension and they were in the alternative center as a diversion to that suspension, then they went through a full blown program and they every single student completed the program, which meant they had to do all their classwork um, the, and they had to research and write an essay to me about why they, you know, what they did, why it was wrong, what they're, how they're going to do things differently. And I think it was very impactful. And we learned a lot as the year went on about how to use the alternative center to take advantage of it fully. I think it'll be even stronger next year. So we definitely have money um, in our budget to maintain the alternative center and to also, also maintain the wellness center. Unfortunately, we have two great counselors, one's leaving us um, who spearheaded a lot of this stuff. So that's Lori Beiser, um, but hopefully we'll have a new counselor in place very soon. And uh, they'll team up with our uh, Raquel Luna, who's fabulous, continue to do a great job and the kids will come back next year where we left off. Thank you. Thank you. And David Nelson, Valley Oaks, who has a presentation for us now. Uh, just to get on the microphone, right? Um, so I think that, uh, you know, sometimes with time, we, we forget what it was like uh, back in August and the conditions and restrictions that we operated on uh, under during those, those times, um, not exactly conducive to the best learning environment, but big uh, thanks and uh, appreciation to all of the Valley Oak staff, um, everyone for making it through those times um, and uh, getting to the point socially, emotionally with staff and with students um, to the point where we ended the year in a really, really good place. Um, and that, um, that growth, that, uh, that change had you know, part, partially to do with the changing conditions with the pandemic, but also because of the hard work of our of our staff of, of everyone office staff um, of course our teachers and classified staff um, and our uh, counselor uh, Hector Reyes who for a number of years now has done a very wonderful job um, with not only the students but also with the community and with the parents so um, I think that as we went through the year and and really did focus on some of the social emotional development. Um, of our students and also our families, as we were able to start doing more regular school type activities, um, it kind of led to a better feeling across the entire school. And I maybe one of the highlights, because there were a few highlights at the end of the school year, but in the springtime when we did our child, uh, Children's Day combined with open house, and I know a couple of you were, uh, you know, were, were there for that, there were literally over a thousand people, right, at the school. And it was, it was crazy. It was so many people. It was just so much fun. Kids doing performances, parents going through classrooms. Um, multiple teachers said it was the, the best attendance they'd ever had at, at open house, uh, including many teachers who had 100% of attendance from parents. So I think that was kind of the culmination of where like, we kind of felt like, okay, maybe we're we're back or, or we're getting back. And um, that was a, a really good um, event. And it, it does relate somewhat to our um, goal two um, in, our, in our SIPSA um, 
where you know, we talk about parent involvement and parent activities at the school and strategy and activity eight. Um, one of the other things, a little bit more of an uh, academic focus is we know we're always trying to improve our literacy skills, whether it's early literacy um, or the practice of literacy through reading. And we uh, use uh, Accelerated Reader as a program to um, promote and to track um, reading uh, goals with, with our students. And, you know, we try and make it a big thing because we know that the practice of reading is so important to becoming a better reader, which in turn helps, you know, all aspects of education. So we uh, provide incentives for students to reach their goals. And at the end of each trimester, we have, you know, like a celebration or an incentive. And at the end of the th this third trimester, um, all students in second through sixth grade have their goals. And we had 77% of our students meet their reading goals, which uh, is the highest we've had even pre-pandemic. So um, 283 out of 369 possible students met their, their reading goals in the third trimester. And just to give um, you know, an, an example, in 2017, 2018, in the third trimester, we had 174 with more students at our school. And this year we had 283. So a lot of really good things um, in terms of reading. And obviously that can't be done without uh, the emphasis and um, on reading this in the classroom as well from the classroom teachers because they play a, a very big role in reminding and and promoting reading with their students but um, seeing that um, at the end of the year and seeing the kids so happy about me meeting their reading goals it was actually even featured in a little article in the Galt Herald I don't know if any of you guys saw it we had some students who read million words actually a lot of students and then student read 2 million, another student who read over 4 million words. Um, so, and, and thanks to the Galt Herald for putting that in the newspaper because, um, you know, it is nice to recognize those um, really great accomplishments. But, and you know, that goes along with our, our goal one in our um, SIPSA. So two really good things. I mean, lots of really good things, but there's just a couple to highlight there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, your art night was pretty outstanding too, by the way. That was that was some amazing work. That was nice to see. Um, any questions or comments from the, the rest of the board? Okay. Tom, if I may, I would like to add sure. um, a comment. All of our administrators you just heard, they um, were very thankful for the work of their staff, the efforts, the commitment. I would like to recognize the commitment, the hard work and the effort of our administrative team. Everything you heard about right now was made possible because of the leadership that you have in front of you. So I, I, I think they, um, they often do not give credit to themselves, but I just wanted to highlight that there's no document in which we can include the commitment of your administrative team. So you are very lucky to to have them leading your sites, your schools and the children. We absolutely are. I, I agree with you there. Um, I just wanna say that, you know, for myself reading through, you know, the various SIPSAs, there was definitely a, a commonality in there. Um, I think primarily, I think the thing that, that stood out to me, the concerns for, for social emotional learning, the, the, the MTSS supports, that the fact that the supports were in place and how important that was, how impactful it was. So I think it's great for us as a, as a board to get that feedback that, 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 you know, that, that, that those were, you know, that those were good decisions that we make to, to, to help put that into place. So uh, hearing that from all of you, obviously, I think that's, that was, that was, that was hugely important for, for, for the entire community in terms of, of what our priorities were but I think it was great to hear from all of you just, just how impactful that was. So, so thank you very much. And yes, thank you all for the hard, hard work. I'm looking where we're at right now, you know, as opposed to where we were a year ago, you know, I think it's, you know, it's, that took a lot of, lot of hard work from everybody to get us there. So, you know, I appreciate the entire community for, 
for their engagement and their involvement and their hard work. So, so again, thank you very much. And, and, and thank you. I, I really, I really do appreciate when, uh, when the principals can get up here and, and really kind of, you know, crow a little bit about what's going on at their, at their individual schools. Cause I think it's great for us to hear about that. And so, um, I appreciate you taking the time to, well, obviously a lot of time to fill these out, but, uh, but to, you know, to actually talk to us about it. I think that was, you know, I appreciate that. So anybody else? All right. Yeah, no, I, I mean, oh. just totally agree with what you said, and I think it was so wonderful. Um, I was able to attend Valley Oaks um, open house and just to see there were so many people there and everyone was so excited to be back in the classroom, the families to be back in the classroom and the kids showing off their work. And um, you know, I have obviously attend functions at Lake Canyon because my children go there. But yeah, just to see the excitement of everyone to be back on campus. And I think um, this next year is really going to start out great. And I look forward to that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I think next year we could have a, if we can keep up this momentum, we can really have some big open houses and parent mm -hmm. involvement. Maybe we can continue to ride that wave mm -hmm. and uh, get some community involvement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And I want to thank our principals for all your hard work on the, not just the SIPSAs, but all year and your assistant principals, your teammates here that I know you rely on them a lot and, and it's been a, Boy, our assistant principals, they've been subbing this year. They've moved it around back and forth. And it's just, it's been a lot of work for them as well. And they've just done a great job supporting our principals being that, that right hand, left hand, foot sometimes so the principals can lead their schools. And just really excited about next year. And I, I do, Casey, just I, like what you said, the momentum with the parents. We saw a lot of parent involvement the last couple of months of school, at least parents really coming out and attending anything that our sites, all of our sites had some really great events this spring and all of them were very well attended. So I'm hoping that that will continue um, next year. So I'm really excited about next year. All right, thank you. Um, anybody else? All right, well, if not, then I will move to approve item 212.320. Um, do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. I have a motion from Tom Silva to approve item number 212320, seconded by Casey Ravoy. Tracy Skinner? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. Okay, and now on to item 212.321, board consideration of approval of the Galt Joint Union Elementary School District 2022-23 Local Control Accountability Plan, the LCAP, which we had an, uh, I'm sorry, we had a meeting for that last week, right? A public, uh, public hearing, we I'm did. sorry. Yeah, we did, so I'll right. just, yeah, briefly summarize. Um, we, we'd had our public hearing last week on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, we shared different components of the LCAP. We have submitted our LCAP to the county for approval. Um, we're waiting for that. Once it is approved, we will also we will get it, a final copy and it will be translated and it'll be on our website in Spanish as well. We haven't received any additional comments. Um, it has been open still on our website for feedback. Um, we also did not have any public comments at our meeting last week, but something that we will work on this next year kind of goes with this whole parent involvement. Some of the discussion we had um, about this was how can we recruit more parents to serve on our special education PAC advisory committee and our DAC, our district advisory committee. And so that the board had a great discussion and ideas. Um, I think we will we'll talk with our administrators about some of those ideas. And um, Kawhi and I already were talking about some signups that we can put out a back to school night and things like that. The personal phone calls um, that have been really um, I think the reason why we're getting so many of our parents to attend our DLAC meetings is because of the personal phone calls. So I think next, next year, um, having parents sign up for those DAC and special education committees and then making the phone calls a day or two before the meeting to remind them. Um, so actually we already had, I think after the public meeting last um, week, we did have one parent that reached out and said that she's interested in serving on DAC 
So, so that's good. Um, so we're just, you know, hoping to keep that, keep that going. Um, we also made the one edit on page 22. We updated the date change for our PAC meeting. Um, that has been changed. So if the board has any other questions or feedback um, about our LCAP, we did make that change. Thank you, I see that. So, yeah, I think we, we talked about this a lot last week, right? So there's probably no, no, no questions or comments, no? All right, well then if not, do I have a motion to approve item 212.321? I'll make the motion to uh, approve item 212.321. Thank you, Casey. Do I have a second? I'll second. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I have a motion from Casey Raboy to approve item number 212.321, seconded by Tracy Skinner. Tom Silva? Aye. Thank you, the motion carries 3-0. Okay, now we'll move on to the next item, which is also familiar. So agenda item 212.322, and that's board consideration of approval of the Galt Joint Union Elementary School District 2022-23 budget, which of course we had a public hearing on last week also. So again, anything new? Um, no, not- With the budget, it changes like daily, doesn't it? Yeah, they're still negotiating. And so hopefully by next week, um, we'll hear a little more and, and have some- you know, agreement between the governor and the legislature. So we're watching it every day and reading the updates that come out and things like that. And so um, just kind of holding our breath and see what they agree on. But um, kind of like Lois said, we did present this last week as well as the PowerPoint. And so if you don't have any additional questions for me, then I don't have anything additional for you on this particular item. Anybody have any questions or comments since we discussed this in detail last week? Okay, well then if not, do I have a motion to approve item 212.322? I'll make the motion to approve 212.322. Thank you, Tracy. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. I have a motion from Tracy Skinner to approve item number 212.322, seconded by Casey Raboy. Tom Silva? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. Next on the agenda is item 212.323, and that is board consideration of approval of resolution number 17, and that is a resolution of the governing board to commit fund balance for 2022-23. So what does that mean, Nicole? So the last meeting that we did talk about, we looked at the MYP and talked about um, the different ideas that we had presented and asked you if you had any others you wanted us to change at this point. And so the current resolution does um, on the next page does say that you are committing the unassigned general fund balance for future technology upgrades, textbook adoptions and facilities in the amount adjusted as needed to adhere to the 10% requirement in the ed code. It also says that you may redirect those funds by the board if, um, just by taking additional formal action. Any questions on that item? Okay, if not, I will move to approve item 212.323. And do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. I have a motion from Tom Silva to approve item number 212.323, seconded by Casey Raboy. Tracy Skinner? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. And now on to item 212.324, and that's board consideration of approval of the 2022-23 Education Protection Act use of funds. So every year we have to... Um, take to the board and it has to be approved how we're going to spend these funds. And so um, they can't be spent on administrative costs. And so we just spend them on salary and benefits for regular education teachers. When the EPA was created, it was created by the state and it peeled off personal property taxes and different um, sales taxes and things and built kind of an account. And what it did really was offset the state aid that the state was already paying us. So it was like a shell game, like instead of me paying you, I'm gonna collect these taxes and you're gonna get these instead. 
And so, okay. <laughs> yeah. So as EPA shif um, shifts throughout the year, you get more or less state aid. So it's just a piece of your pie. Um, it's just a funding source of the LCFF revenue. Um, so for 22-23, it's estimated at the 8.3 3 million, and it fluctuates as the percentage fluctuates with the state. Um, and so we just have to approve that we'll spend it on teacher salaries each year. Okay. Any questions about that? All right. If not, do I have a motion to approve item 212.324? I'll make the motion to approve item 212.324. Okay, I will second that motion. I think you have a motion from Casey Raboy to approve item number 212.324, seconded by Tom Silva. Tracy Skinner? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3 0. Okay, next item on the agenda is item 212.325. Board consideration of approval of proposal for architectural design services for new Galt Joint Union Ele Elementary School District prefab shop building at the maintenance yard. All right, thank you. I will present this item. Currently, our district maintenance department does not have a, a working shop. They never have. Um, they work out of two portables at Fairsight um, Elementary Readiness Center. Um, they're their welder, their welding machine is on the ground in a portable. Um, there's definitely some safety issues with that. Um, storage for tools um, and equipment has been an issue over the last couple of years as well. We've had a lot of theft over at MOT. In the we have cargo units that we store a lot of our equipment, and um, we've had trucks broken into. We've had all kinds of things stolen this last year over there, thousands of dollars turned into insurance. Um, so we're really looking at um, the safety and the security and also taking into consideration what other districts have for a maintenance shop. Um, so we have the property over at MOT. Um, we're considering or adding a shop um, adjacent to where the mechanic shop is right now over at MOT. It'd be on the, the far side there. We, we have a, a decent size mechanic shop for our buses that we can work on. Um, our buses, they have a bathroom, they have an office, and they have, I believe, two or three different ways that they can lift um, and, and work on buses. So we're, we're pretty good in that area. But um, just looking at what we would need for, um, you know, maintenance, it would be a prefab, it would be a, a shop very similar, the same size to what we have now for the mechanics, we would be able to park trucks in there, tractors, riding lawnmowers, um, there would be some benches to work off of for the welders, there would be an eyewash station, um, racks and things for storage, there would be one small office and a, a small bathroom. Um, we're looking at, we have the, the contract that's before you tonight is for DCA architects just to start the plans. Um, if the board approves this contract tonight, we would contract with them for the pre-design, the schematic design, construction documents, and bid phase support. And so that's the very beginning stages of any construction project is having the architects draw up the plans. And the estimated cost for that is $117,000 for this phase of the work. Once we get this phase of the work done, then we would take the project out to bid. Um, we would have the drawings, we would have the, the specs, and we would try to get a general contractor to take the job. At that point, we would secure contracts with a, um, a GC, and then we would know what the estimate would be to actually build the shop. So those contracts would go to the board before we got into, got into anything with the general contractor. So right now, the board approving this is just moving forward with the designs and then the designs we have forever. Um, if, if we come, if we say we get the designs, we go out to bid two, three months from now, um, the proposal comes back something higher than what we can afford or more than what we thought, we would put it on hold. Um, we do have a million dollars um, that we saved in reserve out of the 21-22 budget for this. It has been in our facility plans for a while. I think I brought it to the board a couple of years ago that it was a need. So we've been saving money for this project, um, but just really who knows with, with labor and cost and materials, 
it's hard to say how much it would be to actually build this by the time we go out to bid. The estimate is over a million dollars right now. Um, you know, I, it just depends on, on where we are with things for materials and that. So we are asking um, for board approval, we would be using facilities and maintenance funds for this project. Um, as far as location, we are keeping it away from the side that backs up to, we have 10 acres out there. Um, and we know one day we probably will have to build out Lake Canyon. Lake Canyon's our smallest elementary school. Um, we have plenty of property there to add portables or permanent classrooms. And so we would put the shop on the opposite side of that property. So we would still be able to build out Lake Canyon if needed one day. Yeah, I just think it's amazing that they're actually doing this work out of two portables. That's that kind of blew my mind. I just don't know why I didn't know that uh, that we didn't have a maintenance shop. That just kind of surprised me. Um, and I know how challenging it can be. Um, I can tell you, you know, having done maintenance in the field in the military and you know working on tanks and things like that, outdoors is not not the most conducive environment you make do um but you know that's one thing for the army to be out there you know dragging a tank around i don't think that our folks within a school district need to be welding inside a portable i think that's just it's long overdue so so i'm glad to see that uh, that you're that you're doing this and then just real quick because I, I know we have a history with with dca what were some of the other projects that they've done for us because i think we you know we have a very positive history with them we do. The board, when we, gosh, probably must have been at least four years ago now, the board approved contracts with DCA and PBK architects. We've used both of them. Um, DCA, they were the architects for Greer, um, the work we just finished up over there at Greer. Um, they also were the architects for Valley Oaks, um, both of the projects at Valley Oaks that we did. And um, no, P PBK was the track, sorry. So two at Valley Oaks and one at Greer, so three three projects so far. Good. So we definitely have a positive mm -hmm. history with them. I think that's that's important too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments on that? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then, if not, do I have a motion to approve item two one two point three two five? I'll make the motion to approve item 212.325. Thank you, Casey. I will second. Thank you. I have a motion from Casey Ravoy to approve item number 212.325, seconded by Tom Silva. Tracy Skinner? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. OK, next on the agenda is item 212.326, and that is board consideration of approval of the 2022-23 expulsion panel members. Thank you. Each year, we do bring you a list of administrators that will serve as expulsion panel members should it be necessary to conduct an expulsion hearing. And um, we have before you the list of our administrators who could serve on that panel should it be needed. And board approval is um, recommended. You know, we haven't had an expulsion hearing for at least 10 years, um, but in, in case that we do, we need to have our panel. So then how, how many members normally make up uh, an expulsion panel? And it's not like everybody on the No, list it's not. Members. You know what? And I think I've served on it one time long ago. Can my... Um, three. Is it like five three. or something like that? Or three. just oh, three? Three. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So definitely you probably won't, you know, have to worry about it serving on too many different uh, panels. Okay. Any questions or comments? All right. I will move to approve item 212.326. And do I have a second? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I have a motion from Tom Silva to approve item number 212-326, seconded by Tracy Skinner. Casey Raboy? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. 
Okay, next on the agenda is item 212.327, board consideration of approval of board policies, administrative regulations, and board bylaws. So would you like to go ahead and sure. cover the highlights? I will. Well, we brought, um, our, the first reading was last month in May, was the regular board meeting. We brought to you the changes, the highlights for these board policies and these administrative regulations. Um, these are recommended policies or changes by CSBA, and we are just following, following procedures and our staff, um, cabinet and myself we highlighted different things um, with these policies last month we definitely can answer any questions um, we do recommend that we get up to date on these policies and some of these policies even though maybe um, our current board policy is outdated we are al already following current law especially when you look at the one for agenda and meeting materials for our board meeting board meetings we we are already currently following the new law with how we post and, and things like that. Um, but it would be nice to actually get it in writing updated policy on how we need to conduct our meetings. Just one example. Okay, questions, comments? All right, then do I have a motion to approve item 212.327? I'll make the motion to approve item 212.327. Thank you, Casey. Do I have a second? Thank you. I have a motion from Casey Raboy to approve item number 212.327, seconded by Tracy Skinner. Tom Silva? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. Next agenda item is 212.328, board consideration of approval of declaration of need for fully qualified educators for 2022-23. Thank you. This is also an item that we bring to you every year. Mm -hmm. The California Commission on Teacher Credentialing requires school districts to file a declaration of need prior to issuing any kind of permit and prior to hiring interns. This declaration of need includes one permit for a single subject limited assignment in the area of PE and for a potential of six interns. The declaration of needs provides our district with flexibility and options um, to fill current vacancies. At this time, we are asking for board approval. Out of curiosity, how do we compare with other districts of our size in terms of these needs? I don't have that answer, Tom, but I have noticed that the larger the district, the greater the number. Okay. But as far as the district our size, I don't know. Okay. Just curious. Any other questions? All right, I, I will go ahead and move to approve item 212.328. And do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. I have a motion from Tom Silva to approve item number 212.328, seconded by Casey Raboy. Tracy Skinner? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. Okay, next on the agenda is item 212.329, and that is board consideration of approval of a memorandum of understanding, MOU, between the California School Employees Association and its Galt chapter number 362 of the CSEA and the Galt Joint Union Elementary School District regarding salary range increase for bilingual instructional assistance and special education instru instructional assistance. Sorry, that was a mouthful, I know. When I put it on there, I was like, well, if I start using acronyms, then, you know, I was always taught not to do that, so. No, that's okay. Very wordy, just, yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's, it's cool, because I don't have to memorize it. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, in conjunction with um, the CSEA salary schedule change in 21-22 to address the minimum wage issue, instructional assistance ended up on range J. And so this is just realigning bilingual instructional assistance to be one range above that, and then aligning special ed instructional assistance to be one range above the bilingual 
And so that would put bilingual IAs at range K and special ed IAs at range L. The fiscal impact is around 44,000 per year. Um, we pay for IAs out of various um, funding sources, general fund, uh, federal title dollar, special ed, local grants, kind of where they are and what they're needed for. And um, so this MOU was ratified by CSEA as well. And so that will fix the um, ranges for effective for the 22-23 school year. Okay. Any questions regarding that item? And then do I have a motion to approve item 212.329? I will make a motion to approve 212.329. Thank you, Tracy. Do I have a second? I'll second. Thank you, Casey. Thank you. I have a motion from Tracy Skinner to approve item number 212.329, seconded by Casey Raboy. Tom Silva? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. Okay, and then the next item on the agenda is item 212.330, and that is board consideration of approval of a memorandum of understanding, an MOU, between the California School Employees Association and its Galt chapter number 362, CSEA, and the Galt Joint Union Elementary School District regarding Article 13, layoff and reemployment. All right, thank you. So the last couple of months we have brought to the board the need to sunshine this article, um, which means we agree to negotiate with CSEA. Um, the law changed. Um, Assembly Bill 438 made significant changes to Education Code 45117 related to classified layoffs. And so we have negotiated with our classified union and the new language is attached for your reference. Um, we color coded it for you so you could see the changes, really just some timeline changes. Now um, layoffs for classified staff really mirror the process that we follow for our certificated staff. That was the change with this law. So you can see the, the blue was added and the red, um, the strike through that, that was changed. Um, it has now been approved. It's been ratified by CSEA. And so they do, they approve this language change as well. It's just really following the new law. Yeah, and that's not the first we've heard of this. So any other questions or, or comments? Okay, then I will go ahead and approve or move to approve item 212.330. And do I have a second? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I have a motion from Tom Silva to approve item number 212330, seconded by Tracy Skinner. Casey Raboy? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. And our next agenda item now is item 212.331, and that is board consideration of approval of a memorandum of understanding, MOU, between the California School Employees Association and it's called chapter number 362, and the Galt Joint Union Elementary School District regarding creation of a transportation department clerk position. So this is, um, this is driven out of the need for the transportation department to be supported um, with some, with a clerk to help with the unique needs of the department. Um, they have not had a clerk particularly assigned to them and, and their specific duties. And so we worked with CSEA to do a job description that was tailored a little more to the transportation department. And we worked on negotiating a range for that job of R. And so the fiscal impact is approximately 43,000 a year. 50% of that is paid by the high school because um, our transportation department serves both districts. Uh -huh. And so for our portion of that, that would be from general fund. And this was just ratified by CSEA, yes, Lois? I get them, there's been yeah. a lot of activities. We, we have a lot with CSEA that we've been working on. Um, this one is out for vote and it that's would be, right. yeah, we will have the vote. We'll hear about it next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's yeah. Yep. So it's out for pending ratification with CSEA. Okay. Any questions about that item? Okay, if not, do I have a motion to approve item 212.331? 
I'll make the motion to approve item 212.331. Thank you, Casey. Do I have a second? I will second. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. I have a motion from Casey Ravoy to approve item number 212331, seconded by Tracy Skinner. Tom Silva? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. And next we have item 212.332, and that is board consideration of approval of resolution number 18, and that is a resolution to reduce or eliminate classified staff due to lack of work slash lack of funds. Superintendent. Thank you. So we're looking at um, kind of a district restructure in our district office to support our, our bilingual needs. And this restructure goes along with the transportation um, position that you just approved as well. Um, there is a reduction in, in two jobs here, but in the big picture of things, we are increasing positions as well. Um, we are eliminating a district clerk two or recommending a district clerk two to be eliminated. We currently have four. Um, the fourth was hired with race to the top funds. Um, but with that elimination, we would be hiring a full-time bilingual office assistant for our office. The primary duties would be um, light clerical work and written and oral translations and working the front office phone calls. Um, it's definitely needed. It's required by law that we have somebody in that position as well to translate our documents that are required to be provided to our families in Spanish. Um, we currently do not have a position in the district office that has these duties in their job description. And so we are trying to, um, to fix that. Um, in addition, so there is one clerk that is being reduced, but we would be hiring an office assistant and we would also be hiring a transportation clerk. So we're actually bringing on more staff with this reduction. And then the last one, we have a vacant bilingual instructional assistant at Valley Oaks due to a retirement. That position is a five hour position and with um, TK moving to Fairsight, um, we feel that we would like to replace this, this, this job as a 3.75 instead of a, a five hour position. And so, but again, at the big picture of things as well, we have hired more instructional assistants due to TK because the ratio is 12 to one in TK. And also we've hired more instructional assistants because of the expanded learning funds. And so, so we can make these reductions because both of, both of these positions have been funded with specially funded um, grants or specially funded federal funds. Um, so board, board approval is, is recommended to make these changes. All right, thank you very much. Any questions or concerns about this item? All right, then do I have a motion to approve item 212.332? I'll make the motion to approve item 212.332. Thank you, Casey. I will second that motion. Thank you. I have a motion from Casey Raboy to approve item number 212332, seconded by Tom Silva. Tracy Skinner? Aye. Thank you. The motion carries 3-0. All right. Thank you. Now uh, we'll move on to item G. Is there, are there any requests for public comments for topics not on the agenda? Yes, Mr. Silva. I have one request for public comment at this time. All right. You may proceed. Everyone, I just wanted to acknowledge both the Juneteenth holiday as well as Pride Month. I have not heard those acknowledged in this meeting or the previous meeting this month. I would also like to say that for all students, teachers, staff, and family that are part of the LGBTQIA plus community, I want you to know that you matter, you are valued, you are loved, and you are not alone. Happy Pride Month, everyone. Thank you, Ms. Kaufman. Thank you very much. Any other requests for public comment? No, there are no further requests for public comment, Mr. Silva. Well, thank you very much. Um, pending agenda items, school district properties. 
Property is always a hot topic in Galt. Um, any other suggestions or recommendations, things that we'd like to consider? Not at this time? Okay, then we will move on to item I, adjournment. This meeting is hereby adjourned. Thank you very much.